Hello and welcome to the Scatterbolt channel and today I'm going to give you guys an overview of the Gigabyte AORS 5 gaming laptop. I understand a lot of you who are watching this video are probably students and you're looking for a laptop that can both game and be somewhat productive for the upcoming school year or semester and if you're in that boat luckily I am currently enrolled at my local university as a computer engineering student so a lot of what you're hearing today in this review it's not only from my experience of messing through text editors, compilers, virtual operating systems and all that, but also at the same time using a laptop for on the go gaming, like in a LAN party and all of that. So in this video, I'll be covering the specifications on the AORS 5 along with its value and then getting some productivity and ergonomic figures for say a school setting and then some gaming benchmarks to top it all off. So if you like laptop review videos like this in a school setting, definitely give this video a like because I do have another one coming up. And also, if you want to see that one, might want to subscribe too. So inside the Gigabyte AORS 5 laptop, you are of course given Windows 10 along with a six core 12 threaded i7 10 750H that has a base clock speed of 2.6 gigahertz, but can turbo boost up to 5.0 gigahertz has dual channel, 16 gigabytes of memory, clocked in at 2066 megahertz, along with a single 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD, along with a dedicated GTX 1660 Ti 6 gigabyte graphics card and integrated Intel UHD 630 graphics that are on the i7 processor, along with the 15.6 inch 1080p 144Hz display, which all costs about $1,300 to $1,400 for this model. But now let's go ahead and actually look deeper into these specifications and see how they sort of affect the value of this Gigabyte laptop since it is quite the purchase in comparison to my current daily driver that I did use for college, the Huawei MateBook Pro X. So first off, if you're gonna be a student and a gamer, this does come with a single 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD, of course, but seeing as the current game file sizes of current games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Forza Horizon 4 have gotten very big, that 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD will be, I think, perfectly fine for a school setting along with a few smaller games. But if you plan to make this like your whole PC, like all your Steam games and everything like that on top of your school applications, you are probably gonna run into space. Currently, I've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Halo Master Chief Collection, Fortnite, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider installed on this laptop, and here's how much storage I have left. So not a whole lot, but admittedly, during my experience in college, I just had Civilization 5 and 6, Stellaris, and Gary's Mod installed onto my laptop along with my other desktop applications, and that was fine. So if you're looking into really like in-depth popular PC gaming and storing all of those games on this laptop, you might run out of space, but I still think you can probably get away with the storage that's already built in. However, the AORS 5 does have some features to fix this because it does come with an extra single M.2 SSD slot for another M.2 SSD and an extra 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD bay for another SATA device. So even if you do run out of storage, there is expandability. So it's not like you got to totally give up on the laptop, whereas with my Huawei, I really can't disassemble that, so yeah. One other thing I did notice with the display is that on top of it being 1080p and 144 hertz, it's also IPS, which comes with its benefits in a school setting. So say like you're in a work environment and you're wanting to show some friend to your code, but you don't wanna just turn your whole laptop to the side to show them. Luckily, since this is an IPS panel, it's gonna be great from all viewing angles including from the side, say if you're sitting next to someone on a table, which is gonna be super useful for all your lines of code, which already are kind of hard to read with. So that IPS panel will come in handy for those scenarios in a school setting. Now let me go ahead and briefly talk about some productivity and ergonomic figures that I acquired while using this laptop as if I were a typical computer engineering student from last semester. So after about 50 minutes of use on this laptop, which is about the same amount as if you were to use this laptop in a lecture room setting since most of my lectures were about 50 minutes long on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I found that the battery life went down from 100% to 68% at 60% brightness. And now it's just going through Google Chrome, making the script for this video, as well as just doing some other things and looking at YouTube on my desktop as if I were not looking at the laptop and then just going back on it. So the battery on this laptop is gonna be quite the sucker. So if I were you, I'd first of all, make sure you go into your power options and have the screen auto turn off every one to two minutes. 
and have it go to sleep on battery like every five or 10 minutes. Because remember, we're working with an M.2 SSD in this laptop and it's gonna boot up like that. So don't feel pressured to have it on for longer than you need to. This thing is just gonna turn on instantly. From sleep that is, not like from a cold start if you were just turning on the computer. Now for the typing, this is going to be better than those skinny yet really elegant MacBook or Huawei MateBook Pro X's because this is using more of a gamer style keyboard along with a keypad on the right side, which is super handy for those of you who might be industrial engineers just going through spreadsheets upon spreadsheets in Excel, just entering all these different values and performing math. And I found that just typing up like a lab report or in this case, a video script for this video, it was all right. The typing experience is gonna be definitely better than those MacBook Pros and Huawei MacBook Pro X's like what I just talked about. But due to the extra bulk, I found that the height of this laptop was just slightly uncomfortable to type in compared to my other laptop. That could just be me just being really used to that lower profile on my Huawei. But I assume over time you'll get adjusted to this. Now, speaking of the bulk, you may think this laptop may be heavy. And surprisingly, it isn't. This thing is actually fairly lightweight, which in a college setting, I mean, I really think weight isn't that much of an issue on the laptop, but if you're on the go and you're late to class and you wanna sheath this laptop into your backpack, this thing can do it, despite its bulk. But along with that bulk, you gotta also possibly consider the other items that might be in your backpack, because again, you don't want your backpack to be like this big. And this laptop is a little bit chunky, so I just be conscious of the other items you're putting in your backpack if you don't have something that's big or supportive. Now to talk about audio, you do have a nice little audio suite that comes with this laptop. It's the Namic, which is a fancy audio suite which will tune the speakers on this laptop. So like either gamer profile, TV profile, and a few others. And I mean, it does the job. I'll tell you this, the volume is certainly loud enough to be heard by other people if you're like in a public setting. But as far as gaming goes, it's all right. But still I'd stick it to like a high quality headset like what you do on a desktop, unless you're working with high-end speakers. But also speaking of audio in another way, this laptop can get a little bit loud here and there. Now in a regular lecture hall setting with the charger plugged in and you're not gaming at the same time, you'll be fine. I mean, you're gonna hear the fan on, you know, regularly, but it's not gonna be anything horrendous. But if you turn on a game, might turn into a little bit of an F1 jet. Word of warning. However, just on regular battery, like what I have right here, it's fairly whisper quiet, so I wouldn't worry about it. So if you are planning to use this on campus, I'd make sure as soon as your day's done, I charge the laptop at home if you're gonna continue working on it or it, just charge it whenever you can really on campus. But the second you start gaming on this, it's gonna start winding up those fans. And I would say if you are playing with like your friends on Discord, I'd also make sure that your microphone has enough noise cancellation, especially if you're really close to this laptop. So just a little word of warning there. This laptop can get a little bit loud in certain scenarios. Now, finally, let's cover some benchmarks, which first of all, I wanna point out that all these benchmarks were done with the laptop plugged in with the charger, because if you don't have the charger, then this laptop will only use the integrated Intel UHD graphics. And those are much, 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 much slower than the dedicated GTX 1660 Ti graphics that are in this laptop. So if you're gonna game, you're gonna have to have the charger plugged in regardless. But that being said, for everyday typical gaming on most popular games you probably wanna play, this laptop can handle it all very well. And most impressively, I found that there were few frame dips actually, despite the 2066 megahertz RAM and the mobile GTX 1660 Ti graphics card. And Valorant, Halo Master Chief Collection, Fortnite and were able to succeed. There were very few frame dips, which was really awesome to see in this sort of laptop. So that was something awesome. Now on the topic of overheating, surprisingly, as you can probably tell from my comments about how loud the fans get, this laptop surprisingly doesn't overheat. So usually when it comes to overheating, if your components get too hot inside the laptop or like in a gaming PC, for example, it'll down clock your components, which will make your games go slower. And after four full sessions of Shadow of the Tomb Raider and its benchmark at its highest settings at 1080p, there was only a two frame per second variance amongst all four trials. And that's running the game at full graphical settings. So that's good to see, but again, this laptop was quite loud from those fans. 
Now to close off the benchmarks, I do want to give a quick word on the display of this laptop because it can't go up to 144 hertz. So typically for a game, you want it to match at about 144 frames per second or above to take advantage of the full refresh rate available on this display. And luckily, the game that I was most concerned about hitting that target with, which was Fortnite, did get about 138 point frames per second with custom settings, really only emphasizing the view distance. So what that means is that you are going to have a fairly smooth and high frame rate experience on this laptop, specifically on Fortnite. And for easier to run games like CSGO and Valorant, it's not going to be an issue at all since those games are probably going to run at above 144 frames per second with the graphical settings maxed out. So basically, it can game. It can game. I'm pretty impressed. And then finally, can it stream? Absolutely. It's got a mobile GTX 1660 Ti, which means you have the NVEC encoder at your disposal. And if say you didn't want to use NVEC, you could use X264 since you do have that six core 12 threaded i7 processor. And here's some streaming footage of me just using the laptop just as normal. So yes, you can stream on top of some really baller 1080p gaming. And that's all I got to say for the Gigabyte AORS 5 laptop. It's a fairly well-rounded, quite capable gaming laptop that does have a few conveniences here and there for typical everyday student use. And really with only one downside, that being the battery life, of course, since it's a gaming laptop and with fans that could get a little bit too loud in some gaming sessions. So if you want to check out the Gigabyte AORS 5, I'll have a link to it in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely feel free to leave a like or possibly a subscribe since I have another laptop review coming up soon. Anyways, that is it for my video. Thank you so much for watching. And this is the Scatterville channel signing out.